Okay, so how do we work with this data? Well, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to bring in the Marblehead data that we already have to give some background context so we can see what's going on. So I'm going to call in from my Marblehead Geo database. I'm going to bring in the outline of the community so that we can see it. And I'm also going to bring in the roads just to give a little more context since we already have that data. So we're looking at Marblehead here too. And you know what, I'll bring in the surrounding towns as well just so that we have a little background. Okay, so in order to add the points we are going to create what's called an event theme or what used to be called an event theme. In Arc Map to map those points, those uh, coordinates and their elevations, we right click on the table and then choose Display XY Data. And what it's going to do is it's going to prompt us and ask us which fields are what. So the X field is X, the Y field is Y, and the Z field, well, guess what? It's also Z. So this is how it should look. The second thing that's going on here that's really important is the projected coordinate system. So the coordinates that are in the DTM files that we're using are in state plane coordinate system. So they were in Eastings and Northings. So you see these very large numbers. And that's important. It happens that the data that we just brought in from our geodatabase is also in that coordinate system so it the arc defaulted to that when it's trying to figure out how to how to position these coordinates but had you brought in some other kind of data that used a different coordinate system arc wouldn't necessarily know what coordinate system it was dealing with in the tables so you would have to actually use the edit button and indicate which coordinate system it was so that arc would place those points properly we don't need to do that in this case because, again, the data that we're using is all in the same coordinate system since it all comes from MassGIS. But know that from the future that you have to make sure this is correct or your points will get placed somewhere else on the planet. So we'll hit OK, and it'll warn us it needs an object ID field. That's fine. And what will happen is you'll see all these points added to your map, and all of these points represent individual positions at which we have elevation values. And so we're going to do that for each of our um, event themes, so that we're going to end up with four event themes. Once you've created the event themes from all four of your tables, you should up with, end up with a scene that looks something like this, in which case you have a whole bunch of points layered over uh, Marblehead and surrounding areas. And this is exactly what we want. So essentially we have four panels that represent different areas uh, and correspond with the files that we downloaded. And we have a lot of points, but we don't have points for everything. In fact, if you zoom in uh, more closely, you can see that there are gaps between the points. And in fact, they tend to follow breaks in topography. So the points aren't evenly distributed across the landscape. They're actually clustered in at, at uh, points where the elevation changes abruptly, uh, which is good because you want to capture those changes and you don't need as many points where the elevation doesn't change. But for our purposes, this is, this is not adequate for creating the raster elevation model because an, a raster file is essentially a, very, a square thing where you have regularly spaced cells. So we're going to have to be, we're going to have to interpolate the values that fall into these empty spaces. But luckily there's plenty of points to work from so we'll be able to do that. So now that we have all those four panels of points, the, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to merge all of these points into one large feature class. And the reason we're going to do that is it makes it a lot easier to then interpolate uh, the, the, the feature class and get one raster. Otherwise, we'll have to do it four times again. And rather than do that, we're going to do it once. So uh, from here on out, we're going to be producing extra files. And in one more efficient, a more efficient, more coordinated way of handling your files is to control your workspace. That is to say that when you do a process, Arc needs to create a new file. And the question is always, where is that file going to go? So we want to make sure that we control where that file goes. In this case, we're going to set our geo database as the workspace so that by default, Arc will output its products into that workspace. So the way that we do that is we go to the top menu bar where it says geo processing, and we're going to choose environments. And this environments dialog window allows us to control a lot of things about how Arc behaves in terms of what it does by default. For the moment, all we're interested in is the workspace option up here. And so you'll see that mine is defaulted to go to this default geo database that um, Arc automatically creates um, in the program file um, folder files. 
but I want this work that we're doing now to go strictly into the Marblehead geodatabase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to where that geodatabase is and I need to go up one level so that I can see the name of the personal geodatabase. In this case it's the MDB file. And I'll click on it once and then choose add. Okay, And then it'll take a second and it'll switch itself over to that and you'll see the path to that MDB file. And I'm going to do the same thing with the Scratch workspace. And the Scratch workspace is a similar concept. It's basically where temporary files are created. So both the workspace and the Scratch workspace are created are designated for my Marblehead personal geo database, and that will hold uh, within this session. And if I save the map, that that setting will also hold, but it will not hold necessarily when I open up ArcMap with a fresh map uh, another time. So this is a temporary change. So then I'll click OK. So now I know that when I do a process, it's always going to want to go there first. I can change it still at any time, but, but that's the default. OK, now we're ready to do some real work. So we're going to use a new tool that we haven't used before called Arc Toolbox. And Arc Toolbox looks like a little red toolbox in the upper menu. And this, when you click on it, opens up a new floating window, which gives us access to a whole bunch of tools, uh, only a small fraction of which we'll ever use. And specifically, the one that we're interested in using now is called Merge. And so we're going to find this Merge tool under the Data Management Toolbox. So if you hit the plus sign next to that one, Okay. you're going to find that it opens up and shows you a lot of different options and so we're looking for general and then you'll see merge so we're going to double click on that tool you can tell it's a tool because it has a hammer next to it and it'll open up a dialog window and here we're going to input our data sets essentially what do we want to merge and so in this case we're going to merge all of those event point themes so the ones that say events are the ones that we want so I'll choose each one one at a time Right. And so I have to drop, drop, hit the drop down button and go back and make sure that I grab all of them. And so I should have five, uh, four files and make sure that I have no repeats. And that looks good. The output data set, it's going to create a new file in our geodatabase. And it creates a default name. And I would call this, I'm going to rename it, call it point merge. You can call it what you like, um, but if you can, avoid spaces and keep the name kind of short. So it's, again, this is a nice thing. Over here, we're going to leave these all the same. This is just an option if we wanted to change the formatting of the columns that are brought over, but we don't have to worry about that. So then once we have it set like this, we know where it's going. We hit OK. It's going to execute the merge, and when it's done, we'll see the product. Once the merge process is completed, you'll see the dialog window telling you, telling you that it's completed. and You can close that. And you should see on your screen a new set of points overlaid in all the other points. So it's probably helpful to turn off the other event themes um, so that you can see the larger layer. And so what you should notice now that is that you've got one continuous um, set of points, and it's, and it's apparent because they're all the same color. Before, you had four different... Uh, panels of colors and now we've got one layer and on top of that it's a feature class which means that it's saved permanently within the geo database that we output to which is different from the event themes the event themes are kind of like layer files in that if you uh, close the map session without saving those will disappear so they're temporary files and if you wanted to re retain them permanently you would need to export them to a permanent feature class okay so we've got the a feature class of all the points for our area. Now we're going to interpolate them to create a raster surface. And the way that we do that is we work within the toolbox also. Now before we go to the toolbox, though, you need to make sure that the spatial analyst extension is on. Um, the way that ArcMap works, or ArcGIS more generally, is that there are extensions, essentially uh, modules that uh, enable more um, specific or sophisticated analyses. And one of these uh, is a spatial analyst which allows us to work and process rasters. So in this customize menu at the top of your menu bar in ArcMap, if you click on that, you should see an extensions option and you want to click on that and we want to make sure that spatial analyst has a check mark next to it which indicates that it's on and as long as that's check mark you can hit close. If it's not add a check mark, nothing will happen but it is indicated. If it's not on or it's not uh, checked, 
uh, and you try to use a spatial analyst tool, it will just simply tell you that it's not working. It won't actually alert you the fact that you need to activate it. In any case, we're ready to go now. So we're going to go into the spatial analyst tools. And we're going to go to interpolation. And then within there, we're going to choose IDW. Now, there are actually um, several options for doing interpolation. IDW is probably the simplest one, um, but Cregan is another popular one. We won't be covering that in this tutorial. It's a little more complex. So double click on the IDW tool, and when the dialog window pops up, you're going to be asked for input values. So the input features are going to be the merged point file, which contains all of your points. The Z value field, the elevation field, of course, is Z, and then it's going to output the raster. It's going to create a new raster file, and it's defaulting to your geodatabase. It should be in your Marbleheads, which is nice because that's what we want. So um, it gives a kind of a cryptic name. So we probably want to alter it slightly so we know what we're dealing with. So I'm going to give it a slight name, uh, a short name. Now I want to make sure too that it only has. Uh, a few, it's, the name is not too long um, because what happens is that with uh, certain file formats for raster file formats in ARC, they, they encounter problems if the file name is too large or if it contains spaces. So make sure you don't have any spaces in the name. The output cell size is calculated automatically to give you a default. Um, with this data that we were using, we can go down to 5 meter resolution. Um, it might take a little bit of time, but it gives you fairly. Um, um, a good uh, resolution on the data. The other options or parameters are um, defaulted. We can accept those defaults and we can just hit OK. Once the interpolation process is completed, you should be alerted to that in the dialog window.